Are you sure you feel good enough to go into work today? Yeah. I thought I heard you throwing up last night. Ah, I'm fine. It's just a little bug. Mm -hmm. I'll get us a video on my way home today. Thanks. Man, you don't look so good. Thanks. No, seriously. Maybe you should take a sick day. I'm fine. I'm fine. How's it going? Fine. What happened? Uh, John threw up and Sammy's just cleaning it up. You're using the vomit kit? No, but I use plenty of disinfectant. Okay, three things. One, we need to make sure that John goes home. Oh, we sent him home right away. Good. Second, you need to get the vomit kit. We could be dealing with a norovirus infection, which is highly contagious. And third, you need to rinse that disinfectant off the counter. It's not safe for food contact surfaces. Also, make sure that all the food that John handled or was exposed to his vomit is thrown out. We don't want this virus spreading through the facility. Okay, I can help with that. No, Sue. Food workers should never help with the cleanup. It's just too risky. Thanks, though. I understand. I'll get the vomit kit. You know where it's at? Yep. Good. Then when you get back, I'll go over all the steps with you, okay? Got it. Great. Norovirus causes vomiting and diarrhea and is the most common cause of food poisoning in the United States. A single episode of vomit can contain millions of norovirus particles, and it only takes between 10 and 100 virus particles to infect a person. During vomiting, particles can become aerosolized, meaning they spread through the air. Any exposed food can become contaminated and should be thrown out. It is also important to throw away the food that has been handled by the person who vomited. It is important to properly clean up vomit because vomit is a concentrated source of harmful microorganisms, including bacteria and viruses. Okay, first step is making sure that everybody is out of the kitchen and only allow people back in after everything has been properly cleaned, disinfectant, and all of the waste has been removed. It is important to wear protective gear to keep yourself and others from getting sick. Protective gear includes a gown, shoe covers, gloves, hairnet, and face mask. Sometimes it's not practical to wear all of these, so at a minimum, you should wear a gown, gloves, and shoe covers. Once your protective gear is on, there are four steps to cleaning up the vomit. First step is to cover the vomit. You want to do this so you can contain the vomit as well as let people know where it is so they don't accidentally step in it. To cover up the vomit, you can use paper towels or an absorbent powder that you can get from a local chemical supply company. To remove the covered vomit, simply scoop them up with your gloved hands and place them in the sealable plastic bag. The second step in vomit cleanup is disinfection. To properly disinfect the area, you want to use an EPA-registered disinfectant effective against norovirus, and you can find this on the label. You also want to use proper contact time, which is also located on the label. Remember, stronger doesn't always mean better. You can use bleach in a 1 to 10 dilution. Then you want to leave the bleach on the surface for 10 to 20 minutes. At present, research has not established how wide of an area to clean around vomit, so clean as wide of an area as possible. This is called the cleaning zone. It includes floors, tables, chair legs, as well as food contact surfaces such as counters. Do what is practical for your facility. If there's any residual disinfectant left after proper contact time, you can wipe it up using paper towels. If you choose to use a mop, make sure you use a pad mop that has a removable pad. You don't want to use a string mop or a sponge mop as these cannot be disinfected after the fact. Step three in vomit cleanup is removal. When removing your protective gear, you want to start by removing your shoe covers. Make sure not to touch any of the surfaces that you have just cleaned as you can recontaminate these. Then you want to remove your gown, starting at the shoulders and rolling inwards. When you get to your cuffs, you can remove your gloves, turning them inside out. 
Place these materials into the waste bag containing all your other vomit cleanup materials. Wash your hands. Then you can remove your hairnet and face mask and place these into the bag as well. To remove waste, you want to make sure that you have all of the cleaning materials as well as your protective gear in the bag. Then seal the bag or use a twist tie. Remove the waste from the facility immediately according to local, state, or federal regulations. Step four in vomit cleanup is washing your hands. To properly wash your hands, first turn on the water to a comfortable temperature. Then wet your hands under the running water. Apply soap and rub together vigorously to create a lather. Continue rubbing your hands together for 10 to 15 seconds, paying close attention to your nail beds, in between your fingers, and your wrist. Rinse your hands under the running water, making sure all the soap is gone. Immediately dry your hands with paper towels, then use the paper towel to turn off the faucet and throw the paper towel away. Controlling norovirus in long-term care facilities is important because older adults are a highly susceptible population and can develop severe complication resulting in hospitalization and even death. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 59% of norovirus outbreaks occur in long-term care facilities. So what did they tell you at work today? When can you go back? Uh, 48 hours without any symptoms. Or a note from the doc that I'm free of the norovirus infection. Mm. I'll get you some more videos. Aww. <laughs> War and peace, maybe? Uh-huh.